In physics, there are two types of reference frames. We have inertial and non-inertial reference frames. An inertial reference frame is a frame that is either stationary or moving with a constant velocity. On the other hand, a non-inertial reference frame is a frame that is continually accelerating. So, a second important distinction between these two frames is as follows. Inside the inertial reference frames, Newton's laws of motion hold while inside a non-inertial reference frames the laws of motion do not actually hold. Now to see exactly what we mean by that statement let's suppose we have a rotating reference frame. So a rotating frame is in fact a non-inertial reference frame because as it rotates it continually accelerates the velocity continually changes direction. So Let's suppose we examine a rotating merry-go-round, so a rotating flat disk, and an observer or a person is sitting on that rotating merry-go-round. Now, let's suppose that we are in the reference frame of the person who is sitting on that rotating merry-go-round. Now, to that person, the platform on which they are on seems to be stationary while everything else seems to rotate around that person. So, if we sit down on a merry-go-round that is rotating to us, that disc will seem to be stationary. So that merry-go-round seems to be stationary while everything else around seems to rotate around that person. Now, let's ask the following important question and see if we can answer it. So, what does the person sitting on that merry-go-round observe when they place a ball at rest next to themselves? So, let's imagine where that person who is sitting on that rotating merry-go-round. So, to us, that platform seems to be at rest. So, if I take an object, a ball, and I place that ball at rest onto that platform, that ball, at least according to that person, is initially at rest. Now, once we release that ball, what should that person observe? Well, if Newton's first law of motion actually holds, that ball should not move anywhere because if an object is initially at rest and no net force acts on that object, that object should remain at rest. However, what the person actually observes is when they release that ball, that ball will move in the following curved pathway as shown by this dashed region. So, According to Newton's first law of motion, an object at rest will remain at rest if no net force acts on that object, our ball. However, according to the person on the merry-go-round, the ball placed at rest will begin to move and will follow the path as outlined by this dashed line, even though no net force actually acts on that object. That basically means that the laws of motion do not hold in non-inertial reference frames, in rotating reference frames. Now, what exactly is this force that acts on that object when we're within non-inertial reference frames that causes that ball to actually move? So this force that seems to act on the object, on the ball pointing outward and causes it to move is referred to as the fictitious force, also known as the pseudo force, the phantom force, and the inertial force. So basically, the pseudo force or the fictitious force is an apparent force that acts on all objects, on all masses that are found inside non-inertial reference frames. Now, an important point must be made about the fictitious force. This force is not actually a real force in the same sense that a contact force is a real force. So there's no physical contact between two objects that is causing that ball to actually move. In fact, it's a force 
that we made up so that we can make calculations inside non-inertial reference frames using the second law of motion. So basically, the pseudo force is equal to m times v squared divided by r. So if we're inside the non-inertial reference frame, the force that is causing this object, the mass, to accelerate is given by this equation. So once again, this is not an actual force and was made up so that we can make calculations using the second law of motion inside non-inertial reference frames. Now, the question still remains. So if this force isn't the actual force that's causing this object to move, what is the force that's causing that object that seems to be stationary to actually move along the following pathway? So the force that creates that motion or actually the reason why that object begins to move is because this reference frame itself is accelerating. So as a result of the acceleration of this frame, our ball will move. So let's suppose that we are a person standing outside this merry-go-round. So we are stationary standing on the ground. So we are inside an inertial reference frame. So, and let's suppose that our merry-go-round is rotating in a counterclockwise direction. So, to the observer on the stationary ground on Earth, when the ball is released onto the platform, it has an initial velocity because of the rotating platform and it continues moving along that velocity as in accordance with the laws of motion. So basically, if we are standing observing that rotating merry-go-round, to us, when that person releases that ball, that ball has an initial velocity. And the reason it moves along the following pathway is because it has that initial velocity and based on the first law of motion, that object will continue to move along its current state of motion because no net force actually acts on that object. So, once again, to overview, the fictitious force, also known as the pseudo-force, is the apparent force that acts on all objects which are inside non-inertial reference frames. And if we are inside that non-inertial reference frame, to calculate what the pseudo-force is, we use this equation. So, R is the radius, V is the velocity, and M is the mass of that object. Now, if we're outside this frame, if we're inside an inertial reference frame, we notice that this force is not an actual force because there's no physical contact that's causing this object to actually move. What's actually causing that object to move inside the non-inertial reference frame is this acceleration of the frame itself. 